longer. We are very close on trade deals. We are very, very close on military and terrorism and all of the things that we have to work together on. So the relationship has never been better. What is our greatest challenge in the Middle East to both our countries, to our Arab neighbors? It's encapsulated in one word, Iran. Iran has not given up its nuclear ambitions. Let's bring in former U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain and former Deputy State Department spokesman Adam Airely. Adam, let me ask you about what the rest of the region in the Middle East might be thinking when they see the president and Benjamin Netanyahu so aligned. I think that things have shifted enough that there would be some relief that that alliance is as strong as it is now, especially because Iran is just trying to spread its influence all across the region. Your thoughts? Well, yes and no. Uh, I mean, there are, in some cases there's cause for relief, in other cases there's cause for concern. Uh, this visit is a visit about two issues, war and peace. Uh, on the issue of war, it deals with Iran. On the issue of peace, it deals with uh, the administration's plans for an Arab-Israeli, uh, for an Israeli-Palestinian settlement. Mm -hmm. I think if you ask the Arab countries uh, about how they view this visit, uh, again, on the issue of war, they're, they're happy that the United States and Israel are making common cause against Iran because Iran is a common enemy. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, on the case of peace, uh, America's or Trump administration's recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and plans to move the embassy are, for them, a cause of concern. Adam, the, uh, also this weekend, the president and Theresa May had a conversation in which they both expressed their uh, worry about what's happening in Syria, um, their concern of that the U.N. resolution is not being upheld. And then I had this quote. I don't know if you were able to hear Connor Powell's report from the region. This is from Reuters uh, reporting on that aid, not getting to the civilians, saying a World Health Organization official said the government had ordered 70 percent of medical supplies to be stripped of the convoy, preventing trauma kits, surgical kits, insulin and other vital material from reaching the area. I know that the United States is not powerless. In fact, of course, the Washington Post right before the show started says the headline is after reports of chemical attacks, the White House considers new military action against Syrian regime. But I read the article it doesn't seem like they're anywhere near actually taking action because there's a lot of disagreement on the National Security Council about what to do. What do you think they should do? Well, you know, it's a, it's a very good point that you raise and that your correspondent raises, which is that there are just so many more questions than answers about what the United States uh, wants to do in Syria. Uh, Tillerson has said one thing, Votel has said another thing, the president said another thing. Mm -hmm. Look, let's be clear. Um, we've seen this movie b before. We saw it in Aleppo, uh, and we've seen it elsewhere. R Assad, Iran, which has a l larger army in Syria than the Syrian army, uh, and uh, Russia are at war, and they are fighting to win. And that means they are going to kill or subjugate or force to surrender all those who do not submit to their authority. Now, you either have two choices. You can either go along with that, which the United States seems to have done until now, or you can resist it and defend those who are fighting for their life, their survival, and their freedom. Uh, we don't seem to be willing to do that yet. I would suggest Trump has, has crawled back or crawled down in the face of one very serious threat, which is the chemical weapons threat. Mm -hmm. He said before he wouldn't accept it. Uh, mm -hmm. He acted. Uh, Assad is testing him mm -hmm. by using chlorine gas and not sarin gas right. because he thinks that s somehow, you know, gassing people with chlorine is less uh, uh, harmful than right. sarin and the United States won't attack it. And he seems to be winning that bet, hmm. which, again, makes the United States look weak, indecisive uh, and not willing to defend its allies. Now, this is where the Netanyahu visit comes and I think might change the equation. Look. Israel is under threat as never before. Right. Iran has opened up a third front to the northwest of Israel, mm -hmm. to the northeast of Israel. Yep. They have forces there. Israel almost went to war a couple of weeks ago when it went after the Iranian drone That's right. that, that came uh, in and Israel Adam, and lost an airplane. Adam, we're going to have to run. I appreciate your thoughts, but there's also the, the point that you know, we attacked those, the Russian mercenaries as well. I mean, there's a lot happening there in the region. We appreciate you coming on to tell us about it, and we'll have you back. Thank you. Thank you. Fox News alert on a new ISIS propaganda video using images from